got a tassel of people. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, all of you are here. If you're not sure, this is Midway Baptist. This is our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, or uh, should have a sheet that uh, <coughs> says number 69. And let me turn my phone down while I'm talking and uh, make sure I got all five of them turned down. That one, that one, and that one. That should do. All right, I'm back. And so we're here studying through. Believe it or not, uh, in the ninth chapter, we start Lesson 70, Lord willing, uh, next week. And uh, we uh, feel that uh, God has hopefully anointed this work to touch your hearts. Uh, it's been a study that uh, is brand new, as most of you know. Uh, over 60-some of those lessons we did I didn't have my library. Uh, you say, well, how come you didn't have your library? Well, uh, they, they started moving my library in 2019 to redo a, an area, and COVID came along. And uh, my oncologist said, uh, when I said, can I go to church? And he looked back at me and he said, are you kidding? And I said, well, can I go down to the mission to my office? Are you kidding? And so uh, I only got my library and still not all together uh, over the last month. And uh, it was like Christmas, though. It was kind of nice. You know, I have <coughs> hundreds, if not thousands of books. And uh, uh, I, I wasn't there, of course, uh, under cancer treatment, couldn't go. And it would just say shelf one. Now I don't know which side they started on. <laughs> and uh, so it became like Christmas. Every box I opened was something different. And uh, uh, didn't matter what the number was on it, uh, it didn't match the setup. And so. Uh, I would try to think now, I've got a pretty good bunch uh, in Genesis and in Psalms, and so I need to leave a little room. And that's the way it was. Maybe Matthew would come up, and I said, oh, I've got a few there. And I know I've got a lot in Romans and Acts and, and the prison epistles. Do you know I had to move everything about three times anyway? <laughs> But I got to know my books real good again. And uh, so, but it's been such a blessing to allow God to give it to me fresh. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. What you're hearing, uh, even to now, I have not looked, and that's a good boy for me. I have not looked at any of my old outlines that I did through the years as a pastor uh, on my Roman notes. I really wanted to be fresh. I wanted the Holy Spirit to speak to me today, uh, not, not from 1976 or 76 or 86. Uh, I, I want it to be fresh, and, and I hope it is, yes. that uh, it has been a blessing. And so uh, I want to thank all of you for being faithful. As I said, we really do. There's there's only a couple of seats left. A few more come, we're gonna to have to put them in the aisles. Remember that old thing we'd hear pastors say, a few more come, we're gonna fight and start setting the chairs in the aisles. <laughs> and so, uh, but I welcome you again to our Wednesday night Bible study and pray that those who are here and those who will be listening will find a blessing from God's Word. Yes. We, we really believe God's Word is needed today more than ever in our country. Amen. That uh, we need the depth of God's Word to live today. 
in a world that's headed in the wrong direction, particularly our country, in a world where rules are changing all the time, I'm glad I have a book and a God that's unchanging. Yeah, unchanging. And so again, we welcome all who are going to be listening. And if you happen to tune into this next week, uh, next year on YouTube, we pray it'll be a blessing to you too. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this church. What a great church. Lord, we, we know we don't have thousands of people. Lord, uh, we, we, we don't even have hundreds. But Lord, those who are here are dear saints. Those who come, Lord, are thirsty for the Word of God. Lord, we believe that when we have five pastors sitting in our morning service, that God's Word's being preached. And preachers know where to go to hear the Word. And so we, we're thankful, Lord, for what you're doing in our church. We're thankful for those who've been added Yes. We ask that you would bless their hearts and help them to grow and to mature because we believe we're towards the last days where Jesus could come at any moment. And we say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Yes. We ask, Lord, the only thing, let us be doing your work. Mm -hmm. Let us be a blessing to you and to others yes. until you come. And so, Lord, tonight we commit this service, ourselves, this group of people, and all who will hear to you. Yes. We ask, Lord, that you would anoint your speaker, and then you would anoint those that hear it. Yes, yeah. That you would work on hearts and on lives, wherever they are. Yes. We believe the Word of God can move us from where we are to where we need to be. Yes. And we're going to thank you for that already. Yes. Now, bless your Word. Let your spirit be at work tonight amongst us. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, we're in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 9, and verse 9, 9-9. Nine, nine. So I'm, I'm going to be reading from my, my phone. Uh, I've got uh, an NIV version that I've come to like. My, you know, my very favorite is the New King James. But uh, I am not afraid, afraid to read any one of them as cross-reference. Some emphasize one thing. Some are word structured. Some are word for word. Some are thought structured. And uh, uh, if you don't have a lot of concordances, uh, if you can have several Bibles to do a resource on, that won't hurt you. Uh, and so I, I, I do pray that uh, as I read this, that uh, even the reading of the Word will be a blessing. Verse 9 through 13, chapter 9. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. And so as we read that, uh, I pray that uh, the word will speak to us because I really believe, folks, the word's alive and real. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I know in John it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Well, that's the living Word too. That's Jesus. Yeah. But I really believe when the Bible says the Word of God 
will never go away. Yeah. That God's word is a standard throughout all time and all places, and that uh, it is going to be throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. And the word, there's strength in it, there's courage in it, there's sustenance in it. And so I pray tonight as we look at this, uh, you will find a blessing. I uh, hope all of you have a sheet uh, in front of you and uh, uh, that uh, uh, we do that because I really believe that when we write, we increase our learning by as much as 60% to 70% or more from just listening. Now, I do know that I'm just not giving a lecture up here. The Bible says, by the foolishness of preaching. And why I know it's not just a lecture is I have a Holy Spirit working in me, and you have a Holy Spirit working in you, which no lecturer has. And that's what makes a difference. God can speak to your heart on a subject that no one else quite heard. Yeah. And sometimes I didn't even say it. Yeah. I really, I've had people come up after a service and say, your message today convicted me of such and such. You know, I never said a word on such and such. <laughs> no, that's the power that there's in this, that while they were sitting there, the spirit was working on them different from anyone else and what they needed to hear was something different and what they heard the spirit say to them was maybe even something different than I said see and that's why I say it's the living word I, I knew I was in trouble in one church when I at the end I used to go to the back and have the people go by and say hi when I was uh, leading the rescue missions uh, in Buffalo and there were a lot of churches I would go to I did that here too and I had one fellow go by me in this church I, I, I you know as a pastor I could sense a deadness I hate to say that but any of you who have preached in churches not your own and you walk into some and some you just feel the spirit well this one I uh, Spirit really had to amp me up uh, because I didn't sense it was out there. And I knew it when several went by me and said, that was a good speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope the Holy Spirit is used for more than that in this. Yes. Yes. So we, uh, as we look here, that one then. Uh, the real descendants here, as we looked last week, uh, of Israel. And we found that there was a group within Israel, the Israel that was a people, eventually a place, that just because they were born there, they weren't necessarily, God said, real Israelites. Because even in the Old Testament, real Israelites believed in God. And they put their trust and their faith in him. And even though Jesus hadn't died yet, by them bringing the lamb or the little bird or whatever they brought, the blood was shed and that blood was represented. And in, when they were faithful and did that faithfully, that they wanted that their sins were forgiven. And all those people we know went into paradise, didn't they? Yeah. See, Jesus hadn't died. No one could go to heaven. They went to paradise. The waiting place. And paradise itself means like a beautiful park. Uh, Some place that's very beautiful to be in. And uh, the other name for it was uh, the bosom of Abraham. The bosom of Abraham. And uh, I really believe when Jesus talked about the rich man and Lazarus, 
that Jesus was talking about real peoples in a real place. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's no parable where there's a proper name in it. Right. You can look that up. There's not a parable that has a proper name in it, Lazarus. Now, if he had just used that and it was just ambiguous, like the prodigal son, we don't know which prodigal son it was. This says Lazarus. And I believe Jesus was using a case study. Yes. And he was giving us a glimpse where those people go, that they were in a good place. And that the rich man, though he had all the things of this world, when he died, he didn't go to such a good place. But, yeah. Everyone went to Sheol, but there were three compartments. <clears throat> there was paradise, there was the gap between, and then there was the place of some kind of torment. The, 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 the rich man said, can I just have him... Lazarus, just bring me a drop of water. That's the same guy that uh, didn't give Lazarus a crumb. Said he got the crumbs that the dogs got. But he believed, and the rich man didn't. So being an Israelite doesn't mean that everyone was in paradise. They too had to believe and be faithful to God's what God gave them. They looked forward to Jesus just as we do. Remember Doubting Thomas said, unless I see Jesus and I stick my finger in the holes of his hand and in his side, I won't believe. And finally Jesus came when he was there and he he came, and I'm sure he came, he came to Downey Thomas with his arms wide open. Thomas. Thomas saw the holes. And Jesus didn't need to lift his robe to show him his side. And Thomas crumbled. And Jesus said, blessed are those that don't see me and believe, right? And that's us. Old Testament saints look forward by faith. We have to look back and believe that Jesus died for our sins. Amen? Amen. Yeah. See, that's what we have to do. But we saw last week the real descendants of Israel were still those that had a belief system. The second one we looked at were the real descendants of Abraham. Now, Abraham, you realize, was not an Israelite. Isaac was not an Israelite. In fact, they were Gentiles. Father Abraham, Father Isaac were Gentiles. It wasn't until Jacob wrestled with the heavenly being and wouldn't let go until he was blessed that his name was changed from Jacob to Israel, which made his sons Israelites. And then God put them in the bosom of Egypt, the strongest country in the world, and let them grow from 70 to millions. Isn't that just like God? God has a plan. They didn't have to fight any wars. They, God, God gave them health codes that they lived by. They were healthier and uh, they prospered. Just think, if almost every one of them had 12 sons like Israel, how fast you could get a group of people together, right? But I know when I was going through with you guys and we looked at the tabernacle, that uh, we also looked at uh, the ones that were old enough to be in the army. And there, I, th I believe, if I remember right, it was something like 800,000 were those that were a fighting age. That had, that I mentioned, had to be above 20. That could be a fighting age. Well, if you had 800,000 soldiers 
and then you have moms, and then you have all those men and sisters, brothers, who are under 20. I have no problem thinking there, but there could have been easily several million people that crossed the Red Sea. Crossed the Red Sea. The real descendants of Abraham have always been a group of believers, a group that were of true descendants of Abraham. By faith, by faith, by faith. Uh, go to the book of Hebrews and go to the chapter on faith. And it says again and again, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. That's the only way we can live, isn't it? By faith. And so the real descendants of Abraham, and Paul goes through that, not only in the book of Romans, but does some of that in the book of Galatians as well, where he describes real Israelites, mm -hmm. real Israelites. And then finally, we looked at uh, the real descendants of God, uh, those who uh, uh, were those that God chose and they listened to the choice. Uh, we're going to be going through, and I want you to know that there's no way I can limit God or you can limit him. We all believe whosoever will may come. There are times God just plain calls and he wants that person. And from, from their mother's womb, they're called. We're going to see a little bit of that tonight with two twins. And uh, the calling was before the birth. David says that God knew our makings before we were ever there in our mother's womb. I don't know if that thrills you, but it thrills me. God's part of the creation of making human beings yet. Amen. He gives us the spark of life. He gives that, that little embryo and sperm and then zygote. He gave it a, a soul, a spirit, a body. That's how I think we're like God. God is three persons. Let us make man in our own image. We have a body. Jesus took a body. We have a soul. God's a, God is a spirit. We don't, we don't see our soul. None of us will ever see our soul. Nor can anybody else. And then we were all born because we're born in the Adamic race. Descendants from Adam who fell. With an empty spot called the spirit. And that spirit's not hooked to anything. The soul's the real you, but that spirit is our hook to God. And that's empty till I meet Jesus. And then my spirit part of me comes alive. And I can communicate with God and he with me. And so last week we saw that there are real people uh, there's always in God's mind, I think, we see vast numbers of people. It's just like, and I hate to say this, people that go forward in Billy Graham crusades, not all of them got saved. Not every one of them. I, I was part in the city of Buffalo of a large movement uh, that was done where we went door to door we held meetings all over the place. Uh, we had a we had a, a little little book that we took, uh, showing God's love and uh, that we're sinners and that we needed to know Christ. And we had bunches of people that came to quote unquote know Christ. Do you know that most of us, after one year, there was no one that from that group that was in our church. And we were the key church to the city. All the meetings that were training these were at our church. 
And so we had not only us going out, when we have training, we'd send others out in the community. And by the end of a year, now I'm not saying that if they really believed Jesus when they were, they, they did. But there's one thing about saying it, there's another thing about believing and living it. And so I, I just want you to know that uh, that was my experience on a large evangelistic platform. And I thought that's sad. Uh, the central church to the city of Buffalo where we had people going out, going out, winning people that they come back and say, you know, that group would say, you know, 50 people came to know the Lord tonight when we were out. 60 people came, 100 people came to know the Lord. Uh, but by the end of a year, uh, we didn't see them. And I know Pastor and myself and others that speak in our church, we, we have all their calls. We want to make sure that everyone here really knows that they know that they know. Yeah. Sometimes you say, you know, doesn't the pastor know we're all saved? What? No. <laughs> uh, our wish is yes. But we believe we got to keep preaching the message. Amazing. Yeah. The message. <laughs> and that some who may have thought at some time in the passage, it's a, it may one day a light blink and say, you know, I'm not sure I ever really let Jesus in my life. I, 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 I believe there's a Jesus. The Bible says the demons believe that. Yeah. But uh, uh, we can even think that he died for us. But until that spiritual <clears throat> movement within your life takes place, you're not saved. That's fine. And all of us started out knowing about Jesus. It's not till we bowed the knees and allowed Jesus to come in and the Holy Spirit that we became children of God. Yeah. So, Abraham's true descendants. There we come. 69, my, my computer's really going slow tonight. All right, uh, our, first, our first thought for tonight uh, we're looking at God's promises, God's promises. And the first one was the promise to Sarah, verse 9. For God had promised, and uh, this being, I mean, I think it could be a Christophany. I will return about this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. It was some heavenly being. They were angels or something. But Abraham called the one my Lord. My Lord. Yeah. There were three of them. He didn't call all of them my Lord. But somehow he recognized the difference in one of them. And uh, I, I often think when the, because Jesus is the only one that has taken physical body of the Trinity. That it may have been a, a Christophany for him. For God had promised, I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. We know Sarah laughed. And uh, of course, the son born was named Isaac, which is laughter. Laughter. We look at this and, you know, are God's promises for sure? Yes. How, 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 how much of the time are God's promises for sure? 100%. I believe that. I believe all the prophecies of the Bible are going to be done just as they are said. Yeah. 100%. That's how you knew a real prophet. Whatever he said always was 100%. Amen. And if it wasn't 100%, Bible said he was a false prophet. Yeah. Right? Sorry. Amen. My favorite 
got a quote from right. Wearsby says this, and that's Warren Wearsby, and uh, I, I know that some of you even have a Wearsby Bible, and and uh, uh, I, I don't have a Wearsby Bible. Do you believe that? <laughs> Wearsby uh, says, there is a difference between natural seed of Abraham and the spiritual seed of Abraham. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael by Hagar and Isaac by Sarah. Since Ishmael was the firstborn, he should have been chosen, but it was Isaac that God chose. Because mm -hmm. that was the promise. See, Abraham and Sarah manufactured when Sarah said, I can't have any children. We, we need to have a lineage for you. I have my Egyptian handmaid go to sleep and have a son with her. And so he did. But that was man-made. That was contrived. Uh, and that just shows you even faithful people. And I've always said to you, all of us have done that. We'd all have a lot more money today and a lot of other things if we hadn't done what? Stupid. You know, we, we, we have all done sometime in our lives stupid. Uh, we'd have more money. We'd, uh, you know, probably got smarter quicker. But uh, uh, what you see here is God's promise said, Siri, I know that you're 90 years old but when you are 91, you are going to have a what? A son. So Isaac is a son of what? Promise. Right? He's a son of promise. Not of manipulation. Abraham and Sarah thought they needed to help God. Have any of you ever done that? No, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I hate to have the whole group raise their hand. You know. But uh, uh, that's the truth of it. Uh, we, we see here also that the birth of Isaac, as I'm saying, is by promise. It was a miracle that took place. The birth of Ishmael was not the promise. It was an ordinary course of nature, wasn't it? It was an ordinary course of nature by contriving. Thus the children of God are specially promised to Abraham were those according to the election of God. And that was Isaac chosen in preference to Ishmael. You know, all of us who are here tonight saved, I think it's a wonderful thing that we all have a spiritual relationship to God through Jesus Christ. And we have the Holy Spirit. Yes. I know I have the Holy Spirit. There's times I've read a passage a hundred times. And God will say something to me this time when I read it. And I have read that verse and read that verse. And it was like an aha moment. Right, Pastor? You know, you come up to it. And it's almost, you know, you almost come to church next Sunday. said, you know, I found something new. <laughs> Amen. And we've read it and read it and read it. But the Spirit of God makes it real. Yeah. Yeah. There's something we needed from that at that time. And all the other times we read it, there, there, it, it didn't need to be there and have an aha moment. But God does that. I told you I was studying one time and I was thinking, you know, I have pastored and been director of several large rest commissions. And I hear wonderful stories <coughs> of God's grace. People who just have dug their way out of the gutter through the grace of God. Had an awful life and did awful things. I had a guy sit at my desk one day and he said, you know, uh, before I got in this program, Pastor, last year, and I could tell he was a businessman. He said, you know, I snorted two nice cars up my nose. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But 
when we look and we see that God works in those testimonies, and I know that many of them have touched my life. And you know, I, I told you I was saved at a very young age by uh, my grand led me to the Lord. I can, I can picture it today, you know, 70 years later, I can picture it yet, Pastor. Uh, I can picture her living room, and I can picture the little couch we sat on, and when we bowed in front of her, she talked to me about Jesus and said, you know, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to have Jesus in your heart? And uh, I bowed and I said the sinner's prayer, and I knew that I knew at that age. I can't tell you what day of the week it was, I just know it happened. You know, did you ever know a 10 year old that kept a book on what you did? I keep some now on my phone, but if you asked me what I did entirely all last week, I'd have to probably look on my phone where I keep my schedule. I didn't tell you folks, uh, about three months ago, my main phone just died and I haven't got it to life yet. Uh, uh, you think, you know, hundreds of pictures and, and thoughts that I'd scribbled down, they're all gone. And I won't remember a lot of them again. I guess one of these days I really got to find the phone and take and see if somebody can get stuff off of it. But it just died. I studied from it that morning and I went to turn it on that afternoon and it was black as black, black as sin. And no light ever came up on it again. I took it to uh, Verizon and they said, we can't get it up. So keep, keep, you know, my wife keeps an actual hardcover thing where she keeps all the schedules. And so uh, uh, for a few weeks, I had to be checking with her what, I, what, I, you know, what doctor I had to go to. But God's promises are real. And he wants us to know that. And he wants us to understand that what he is doing is between him and us. And when I accepted Jesus then, you know, that's not much of a story to tell. I didn't shoot anybody. I hadn't been a drunkard. You know, we have a lot of folks like that at the mission, you know, tell stories of drinking and gambling and carousing and uh, the normal things of the world. Abusive language. But one day God spoke to me and it was just as real as I'm talking to you. I was studying in my office, I was alone. And some of these great testimonies were coming to my mind. And I thought, you know, I just talk about my grandma leading me to the Lord. <laughs> and the Lord was one of those aha moments. And the Lord made known to me, he said, you know, you see the end result and the power that I use to get them out of from where they were to where they are. I want you to know you are who you are because my power has worked in you all the time. From the time you were saved. And you don't have to wish to be like anyone else. I like your testimony. Amen, brother. Amen. See? Yes. Yeah. We all have a testimony. Yep. Some of you got saved later in life and uh, uh, there were some things you've left at the altar. Aren't you glad God forgets the, as far as east and from the west? You know? So I never once again wanted to have someone else's testimony. God just, he kept me. And he said, that takes me as much power as me getting them out to keep you. And so that's the same for you. If you got saved early in your life, you've got a great testimony. It's true. It's you've true. got a great testimony. I know that it was, uh, I believe Dwight L. Moody uh, had led uh, a child 
and an adult to the Lord and he said well he said I've I've got a 90 percenter and a 50 percenter and they said oh you mean the child's the 50 and the person he says no the child's the 90 percenter they got their whole life to live for me that's 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 the deal the earlier you come to know Jesus the more time you have to serve him and so uh, uh, children are important to God remember Jesus when they started saying you can't come to them he said allow the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven so she had she had a son one year later just as was told her the next is the promise to Rebecca verses 10 and 11 and uh, I have uh, uh, New American Standard here uh, and I'd like to read it from that and not only this but there was Rebecca also when she had conceived twins by one man our father Isaac for through the twins were not yet though the twins were not yet born had not done anything good or bad so that God's purpose according to his choice would stand not because of works but because of him who calls it was said to her the older will serve the younger the older will serve the younger 10 and 11 and uh, X uh, 12 and that too but uh, 10, 11, and 12. Isaac and Rebekah had twins, Esau and Jacob, we know. As the firstborn, Esau should have been chosen, just like Ishmael. Now, Ishmael, we can understand, the little gal was an Egyptian. She was a foreigner. Well, this is a little different story. These are both in the line. They're both from Rebecca and Isaac, the seed of Isaac and the seed of Abraham. And the firstborn was Esau, and he should have been chosen, but it was Jacob that God chose. This principle of election is seen in the choice of Jacob rather than Esau. And the illustration is much more conclusive than the case of Isaac. Not only because Esau and Jacob were both legitimate children, while Ishmael was not, but still more because the promise about Jacob being superior to Esau was given by who? By God. God said, God said, my friend, that's one of these cases I told you it's God's choice yeah. God's choice and you know I hope through my life and I hope through your life that most of our choices were God's choice yeah. that they were God's choice that we've made as most of our choices were his choice for us now we have some of those where we do stupid uh, and I always believe a stupid is not God's choice. But, uh, you know, uh, such is the case. Uh, Ishmael was not God's choice. Though they were twins. And though he should have had the birthright as the first son. But that's not what God wanted was based on God some you know we can explain it we can do all sorts of things I just want you to know I have a great God he can choose however he wants he can choose however he wants if, he, if as Nebuchadnezzar says that he said I was humble we know he was an animal for seven years lived like an animal grew hair, grew claws, ate grass. Now, you know, you and I shouldn't be able to live on grass. <laughs> but he did. 
God changed his whole system, didn't he? But when he came to himself, he said, you know, there's a God who puts kingdoms up and puts kingdoms down. I still serve that God. There's not a kingdom that comes up in this world that has surprised God. And I believe that's why America has had blessing because it was founded on religious principles and on religious truths. Now, all those men that did the Constitution and all the different things, they weren't all Christians. But they had godly intent in most of their minds. Many of them were good Christians. But I see today in our country the tail wagging the dog. Where a, a few thousand make a million told to their march. And we are like many other kingdoms that we rot from inside out. And I want to just say to the church of Jesus today, wake up. To our church, wake up. Be a witness. We don't have to put up with all we see. No, we don't have to. God chose Jacob. And he was a little bit of a scoundrel. <clears throat> God loved David. David did some bad stuff. Yeah. Right? Yes. But God chose him and loved him. And uses it that Jesus is going to sit on the throne of who? David. Man after God's heart. I hope I'm a little bit that way that we're men after God's heart, don't you? Yes. And then finally, number three, the promise to us in verses 12 and 13 out of the uh, Holman translation, uh, 12 and 13. Not from works, but from the one who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I've loved, but Esau I hated. In the words of Scripture, uh, in the New Living, that reads this way. I have loved Jacob, but I have rejected Esau. Some say we shouldn't flatten that word out. That uh, God can hate things. That God knows temperaments, and he knows. And Edom was not even when Esau became a nation of Edom, they were not kindly looked upon. And they wouldn't even let the Israelites, who would have been cousins, <laughs> to walk through their land. And God fixed them. I'm glad that I have a God that makes this world go and you know he hasn't asked any one of us for anything of how he can do it has he no. uh, I know when Joe yes Joe had all those things I can't imagine that I, I don't know you know a lot of people would have fallen and just been a heap of dirt not worth a hoot he had everything taken from him in one day, including his family. Yeah. He went from being a billionaire of his day to being a nothing. And then he lost his ten children. <clears throat> I had a lady in my church that had 12 children, and she lived to be 104. And I was burying 70 and 80 year old people. And she'd say to me every time, Pastor, you know, it's not right that children died before their mother. Now you live to be 104, you're going to see some people die. Yeah. <clears throat> but when we look at this, God wants us to do something. I got eight things I want you to write, or at least, at least pretend you're writing so I see a pen. <laughs> 
that goes along <coughs> with this. Uh, my question here for you to write on the, your paper, you can put it on the back or on the bottom. I left more room on the bottom of this one so you could do this. How do we know we are chosen? Well, number one, there is a difference between the physical church and the church universal. We're the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Number two, there is a difference between belonging to Midway Baptist and belonging to the spiritual church of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Number three, having Christian parents or baptism doesn't make us saved. Only our belief in Christ does. Right. Number four, personal merit, status, a good life, doesn't make us saved. I'm going to go over these again. So, five, we are saved and part of the church of Christ by a personal relationship to Jesus Christ. We are saved and part of the church universal there. Number six, he that hath not the Son of God has not life. 1 John 5, 12. Number seven, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Romans 8, 9. And then eight, the proof of our citizenship is in heaven, is the Holy Spirit living within us. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 tells us we are sealed by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Number one was there's a difference between the physical church, the building, and the church universal, the bride of Christ. Number two, there is a difference between belonging to Midway Baptism <clears throat> and belonging to the spiritual church of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Number three, having Christian parents or baptism, even church membership doesn't make us saved. <laughs> Only our belief in Christ does. Number four, personal merit, status, or a good life doesn't make us saved. We can be the best people in the world that people at least think that of us and go to hell. Number five, we are saved and part of the church of Christ by a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship. Number six, this is the one from 1 John 5, 12. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. Number seven, Romans 8, 9. If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? Of his. None of his. And then finally, eight. The proof of our citizenship in heaven is the Holy Spirit living within us. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. We are marked by the Spirit. We are sealed by the Spirit yes. to the day of redemption. Yes. So, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for the Word. Thank you, Lord, that you're a mighty God. You created the universe without our influence. But, Lord, we're so glad that you allowed us to hear the call and that we believed by faith. Thank you for saving us, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Spirit, for living in us. The Godhead living within us. Lord, bless our church. And Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't know these facts and they aren't real to them, may they come to one of us tonight before they leave and make it real. Make Christ the Lord of their lives. We thank you for this group. Thank you, Lord, for so many out tonight. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.